guys, Kirk from the Forever Homestead. So, our system is online. All of our solar is working, uh, everything's wired in, everything's functioning. Um, we're actually using as much power as we can. You know, it's a little bit tough right now. We're not living on the homestead, so we're running a lot of a lot of devices that we normally wouldn't run. Uh, just because we really gotta, you're supposed to work the batteries. You know, we want them in that 80 to 100% range every day cycling through it because over the first 30 to 60 days, your batteries will actually gain some capacity as they start, you know, as, the, as they start getting used in the, you know, the, between the chemical reaction from the charging and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's beginning of September, uh, actually the first of September today, and we're, uh, you know, been sleeping in the tent trailer, things like that. It gets pretty cool. So at night, we've actually been running a space heater, which is something we don't, which we don't normally use um, because they use so much power, but we've been running that just to, uh, just to get the bat battery cycling. Uh, I'll just give you a quick walkthrough of the of the system. We're still learning the ins and outs of it, um, but if you have questions or anything like that, or uh, even comments, you know, if you're running the the same kind of system, if you have advice for us, then please let us know. You know, it's a it's a pretty big system, pretty expensive system, uh, and like to keep it healthy. So uh, I'll give you a little tour. All right, so you remember the. Uh, the pieces of equipment from the last video. Uh, everything's kind of closed back up now. Uh, so in each of these disconnects, uh, disconnect one and two, the solar panels come in, the uh, the PV inputs come in, uh, and then there there's fuses right along the top on each of them. Uh, you know all the high voltage and everything, so everything's covered up. Everything's wired in. Um, so these things normally would be screwed down. I actually. Uh, Oh man, no, I just, there we go. I actually, I didn't, they're not screwed down yet because I wanted to give the, uh, I wanted to be able to show inside of it. Uh, basically there's uh, 13 rows, so each one of these can handle uh, eight uh, strings coming in. So that's why there's two boxes. The red handles on the side actually just disconnect the voltage coming from the panels into these boxes. Um, the blue glowing here is our lightning protection. Um, it's on all of the major major components. Um, everything goes into our uh, load center. Uh, this is the Outback Radeon inverter and the Outback load center. Um, so you can see there's breakers for the for the AC. Uh, there's uh, arc protection, arc fault protection, uh, and then we have all the breakers for the charge controllers. Uh, the big ones up here, 175. Um, amp breakers, two of them, so one for each battery bank. Uh, this is our FlexNet or uh, battery monitor. It shows, you know, the state of the batteries just at a quick, a quick look. Uh, so that powers into our 8,000 8, watt inverter. Uh, and if you look over here on the, uh, one second here. If you look over here, I don't know if you can see that on the video or not. So there's three of these, and you can see here, so the first, so this is running the first four solar panels. So the first four, they're bringing in 98.7 volts right now. Um, the battery voltage is sitting at 53.4 volts. Uh, and right now it's really throttled back. It's only bringing in six amps. You'll see that it's on float. Um, it's about 11 o'clock. They were down to about, uh, I think we had it down to 77% last night, just running everything we can, trying to work the batteries, and it's already at float. Um, this morning, this was running probably, it was bringing in about 50, you know, 40, 50 amps each. So each one of these was doing the same thing. Uh, you'll see on the bottom here, it's saying it's on float, but it's saying the, uh, as soon as it comes up here, uh, the equalization is done today. I ran an equalization cycle just to really top the batteries up and, and keep them in good shape. Uh, overall today, this one has is produced uh, 1.9 kilowatts, um, and this little green light means that it's it's on float. So these are set up. Uh, Midnight Solar has a uh, it's called Follow Me. So this kind of acts as the main the main charge controller. I mean they all work independently, but this one. So as soon as this one is ready to float or absorb or bulk load or anything like that, it kind of sends the word to these two to do the same thing. So for the most part, whatever this one's saying, uh, these ones will be doing the same thing. So equalization is done. You'll notice that this one and this one are actually resting. 
uh, and that's because it only takes a little bit of power to keep this one on float or to keep the batteries on float so these two kind of go to sleep and let this one do the work for now um, it's it's um, everything's everything's wired in to the network uh, you can see green patch cables there into the walls they all come over to the uh, the mate 3 um, so this thing you can kind of run everything you can turn just with a push of a button you can turn off the inverter which turns all the power off um, we're not using the charger on this one because we're you know we'd have to use the flex net charger but we're we're using the uh, the midnight uh, classics they work better for an off-grid situation um, so but once our generator is installed this system will automatically kick on the generator when these when the batteries get to a, a, a really low point um, when the two the battery voltage is too low uh, but just a quick view here you can see uh, you know batteries are at 99% uh, they're sitting at 55 um, this this one seems to be a little bit different than the other one I have confirmed that this battery voltage is the correct one 53 um, I'm just gonna have to read the manual and, and go in here and adjust this voltage so it shows the proper voltage um, but you know this has all kinds of nice features on it you can see how much power you're using uh, scroll through it see what the busy times of day are um, so it's it'll be nice it all connects in there's a there's a switch I don't know if you can see it here there's a switch on the side here uh, that's called the, the switch 10 or communication 10 it uh, ties all these systems together and keeps them talking but we can also put that onto our network so you know from my laptop even from the sunshine shack when we're staying there I'll be able to see exactly what the system's doing uh, the other thing that we have now uh, at least in our area it's now mandatory um, to have a disconnect, a quick disconnect between your solar panels and your, your actually your system. Um, so this is a midnight solar product. Um, yeah, this is a midnight solar product. And what it is, is it's for first responders. If you look at the side of it here, you see it's got some, some red glowing tape. Um, so if, you know, if there's a fire or any kind of emergency, first responders show up, you know, whether it be police, fire department, anything like that, uh, and it's something to do on the property with... Uh, power uh, all they have to do is they open up the door uh, and if they hit this red button here it actually turns off the whole system um, it'll disconnect all power from the roof and it talks the uh, it talks the first responders through it so it'll tell them you know if it's daytime it'll say you know there's still power on the roof but it's disconnected inside on the boxes if it's nighttime it'll tell them that the power is disconnected all together uh, to restore the power you have to go into those the uh, combiners that I showed you inside, turn those red handles off and then back on, and then the system will speak and tell you that power has been restored. Uh, it's kind of nice where it sits right now in our driveway. Uh, you can see the um, the green lights on it. So there's one for to show you that the power is on, and there's one there that shows you that um, the PV is on, so the, the solar panels are actually bringing power in. So just at a glance from the house, the pump house, anywhere, you can see that these things are on. Uh, they also have a battery in them. Uh, I think it's like four nine volt batteries. Uh, they're always being charged by the system itself. But if for some reason power goes out, that system will still talk. It'll still communicate. Uh, it's networked into the whole system. So it's kind of a nice feature. Uh, behind me here is just your regular distribution panel. So the inverter, uh, really thick gauge wire. Uh, I don't know if I can get you to see it here. Not a lot. Where are we? I don't know where we are. Right here. <laughs> really thick gauge wire. Um, I think it's a number three or something like that. Uh, three gauge it runs over into our distribution panel. And then this panel right now, it's running some lights in the powerhouse. Uh, it has a receptacle out in the, uh, in the barn area. Eventually it's going to run the whole barn once we're wiring that in. And it also runs our our pump house um, all the electronics and home automation security all that kind of stuff is running over there uh, also you'll see on here there's another lightning protection and there'll also be one on our generator um, I don't have the generator yet I'm looking at a few of them what I have learned is a lot of the backup generators that you would normally have on your house if the power goes out your generator kicks on um, what I've been finding is as soon as you take that generator and put it into an off-grid situation like we're using you know where it's it's battery based there's no hydro connection no grid connection at all 
we're actually, if we put one of those systems in, we actually void the warranty by not being connected to the grid. Like the manufacturers are telling me, it's called a backup. It's not, you know, a, a, it's not a regular power supply. So we're right now we're looking at the Generac. And I think it's the, I think it's called the eco generator or something like that. Anyway, it's built specifically for an off-grid situation. Uh, doesn't void the warranty and it has all kinds of extra features on it. I'll do a video once we decide and purchase it I'll do a video uh, on that whole system how it wires in um, and then we'll kind of review it a little while later but there'll be more about that next time until then have a good one